how does Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer work? Today, we're going to dive into Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer, the larger than life RPG that is bringing a tabletop gaming experience to PCs and the PS5. And the ability to play with three friends in a four player multiplayer environment in this massive release is a huge draw for many to play Baldur's Gate 3. Let's talk about the options and how it is all going to work. So there are different types of multiplayer. The first one is where you join another player's campaign already in progress. This can be a friend or a random person with the option to allow others to join turned on. Some people may want to experience Baldur's Gate 3 completely in single player, and that is completely possible, of course. But if you turn on the option to allow others to join in, in the settings, then others can pop in your game and take control of your companions in your party. You have full control if you join a game like this over this particular companion and can move them around the world as you please. The main host can assign different companions for you to control if they want, and the main host will still have control over dialogue options. However, the guest or guests will see what is happening when initiated in Baldur's Gate 3, but will be able to see what others have joined or voting for in the dialogue options. This option is great for several types of players in Baldur's Gate 3. People who just want to pick up and join another random person, or when you have a friend playing Baldur's Gate 3, but your time frames of playing don't quite line up, so you hop in when you can. Now, this isn't to say, by the way, that the person joining can't also make some dialogue decisions or anything like that. Now, multiplayer from scratch. This is a, like a static group. What I think will be the most popular option in Baldur's Gate 3, and the one I'm most interested in, is when you create a multiplayer game from the beginning and invite your three friends, or less, it could just be one friend or two friends, but you can do up to three other friends so that you have four players all together. This is a situation where most typically you and the people joining all agree to meet at a certain time on certain days of the week to enjoy Baldur's Gate 3 like you would a D&D &D campaign together. In this case, everyone makes their own character however they choose, picking the race and class and all the options. If someone is missing for a session, the party can choose to bring one of the companions in their place and continue playing. The age-old issue of someone dropping out of the campaign will not sting as bad in Baldur's Gate 3 as in a normal tabletop RPG in this case. Now, each player can run around and start dialogue options and decisions will affect everyone, but everyone can see these dialogue options and can vote on what they want and where the person that started the dialogue will see what they are voting for, but does not have to choose what the majority voted for. The person who activated the dialogue can instead make their choice regardless of what others say. This makes sense because if you think of role play in situations like oaths, with paladins, you wouldn't want others to make you an oath breaker or ruin your roleplay of your character. So just like everyone in your D&D campaign can thwart the adventure or make decisions that maybe everybody doesn't agree with, so too in Baldur's Gate 3 can this happen, and it makes it more rich and interesting. In this way, a story can unfold, one that you particularly maybe would have never experienced if it wasn't for this other player in your group doing and saying these things. And no, you don't have to stick together for the entire thing. Although with the difficulty of Baldur's Gate 3, staying generally together would probably be a great idea, but there could be many situations where you split up to explore, maybe sending a rogue out ahead to kind of scout things out. So many gameplay opportunities here. Now let's talk a little bit about the multiplayer combat. So since Baldur's Gate 3 is based on Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, the combat works pretty much as you would expect with a little bit of a twist. So at the beginning of battle, the players and the enemies all roll for initiative, just like they would in D&D 5e, and the highest roll for initiative goes first and works its way down through that turn order based on these initiative rolls and works in a turn-based fashion. So you will see on your screen the others doing their action and you can see on the top the turn order so you can plan 
what you want to do for your turn. Now, once it's your turn, you decide where your player moves, what actions and bonus actions you take, and then end your turn moving it on to the next person. The twist in Baldur's Gate 3's combat is that when players are next to each other in turn order, players can simultaneously control characters and combine spells and abilities, while still reducing the waiting time between turns, making combat a little more fluid and fast. Baldur's Gate 3, in my opinion, is the perfect emulation of D&D tabletop combat in this sense and allowing options to speed up combat with the shared initiative, but with beautiful visuals instead of having to only use your imagination, and I think it's going to be glorious to behold. Now, I want to talk about Baldur's Gate 3 being a co-op experience because Baldur's Gate 3 is definitely that, a cooperative multiplayer game if you choose the multiplayer option. Now, although you certainly can shoot a fireball at your group members, the game is designed for you to work together, and at the time of this recording of the video, there's no plans for any kind of specific player versus player type experiences beyond just simply having the ability to do that in the campaign if you so choose. So yes, you can hurt your teammates. It's not like they're invincible to attacks or anything, and strategy sometimes might need you to actually do that, but it's not a key part of the plan at this time. Baldur's Gate 3 is like having a built-in dungeon master so you and your friends can experience the campaign in thousands of playthroughs and always find something new. And with mods and future expansions, Baldur's Gate 3 is highly likely going to be the type of experience we want to do over and over for years to come. Now let's talk about split screen co-op. So we talked a lot about online multiplayer, but another beloved feature for Baldur's Gate 3 is the split screen co-op, where you and a buddy can sit down on one screen, one copy of the game, and enjoy it together. And this is certainly possible with two players in Baldur's Gate 3. So if you have plans to take on Baldur's Gate 3 in split screen, you certainly can, and all the same rules and everything we've talked about still apply. Now, let's talk about sharing your things, okay? Most of the information for the session will be shared amongst everyone playing together. So journal notes about adventures, mini-maps discovered, and recipes will be shared amongst everyone in your group in Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer. However, certain cinematics such as romance scenes, those are automatically private. However, if you want to share those with your group members, you can. Inventories can be shared as well, or you can choose to lock it if you have things that keep going missing from some, I don't know, maybe some rogue type friends. Also, each player is rewarded for doing things that correspond with their character's background. These are called inspiration points. They're awarded by the digital dungeon master when you make a decision that makes sense for your character. And it allows you a chance to re-roll if you get a bad roll in a dialogue option and want to try again. These are also shared between your group. Since you can listen in on other people's dialogues in Baldur's Gate 3 and vote for what you think they should choose, I think this opens up a lot of conversation between you and your group, whether you use the inspiration for a reroll or not, and being able to see the journal notes and everything and the mini map and everything, you know, your map updating, getting all the recipes other people's other people have found, etc., really just makes this lean really deep into a co-op type experience. And I think it's definitely the way to go. In closing, Baldur's Gate 3 is offering up the coolest and most in-depth multiplayer we have ever seen and whether other developers like it or not larian is changing and shaping the future of rpgs and setting a new really high gold standard that everyone must do their best to keep up with in the industry after its release I am already planning several multiplayer playthroughs with different people and will be streaming the adventures here on the channel right here on YouTube after release. You can expect this channel to become pretty much an overall Baldur's Gate 3 content channel for a long while into the future as this is going to be a release for the ages. Between playing my own single player campaign to enjoying it with friends and multiplayer, Baldur's Gate 3 is the release of 2023 and likely to blow our socks off at release. But now I want you to tell me your multiplayer plans. Are you going for a single player playthrough only? Do you have friends lined up to go at it online or in couch co-op? Let me know in the comments down below, and I hope this video was helpful in your understanding of how multiplayer works in Baldur's Gate 3. And until next time, my friends, God bless and happy gaming.
I want to give a very special thank you to the members of Napalm for your contributions month over month in keeping me full time. You help me pay the bills so I can keep streaming and pumping out content, and I truly appreciate all of you. Thank you so much, and I think you might be interested in becoming a member of the channel. Please click the join button down below the video for more information and join our family. And I want to give an extremely big shout out to the Lords of Napalm, Bounty Code, Jared Woodhouse, Dime Lopes, Farthest Reach, Sparrow, Christopher Hensel, Random Rob, Zelic Lib, Rodney Mom, Vander, Gallery Moonsong, What's the Takeaway, Trips, Bad Wolf Gaming, Richard Glass, Chrono Guru, Cobalt, and the Cyber Nomad Witcher. Thank you for your highest tier membership.